Hello and welcome to Sightgeist. I am your host, Dr. Rachel Cowart. Back in 2020, I made a video, the top five essential readings for game studies. Now that it's nearly 2024, I thought it was time for an update. Why limit yourself to five when you can have 10? So today we're going to talk about the 10 essential readings in game studies. Caveat I should give. My perspective is the psychology of games. So the recommendations that I'm giving in this video are heavily geared towards psychology and games. However, I do have a special guest in the second half of this video uh, that's going to give us her insights on game development. So if you are looking to learn more about game dev, I got you too. Well, she does. While I'm not presenting these books in any particular order, I did try to sequence them in a logical way. So the first book I'm mentioning might be the first place to start, whereas the last book I mentioned is a little more advanced, not really advanced, specific, subject matter specific, you'll see. Number one, An Introduction to Game Studies, Games in Culture by Franz Myra. Now this is the place to start. I have used the first chapter in this book in many a summer seminar about introduction to game studies. This book opens with a section about what is even game studies, and it talks broadly about culture and play and games history. It talks about how video games have changed from the 1970s into the new millennium. And at the end, it has a section about how to do a game studies project, which I think is really fantastic and can really be thought of as a step-by-step -step of how do I get from point A to point B in the world of game studies. Number two, Reality is Broken, Why Games Make Us Better and How They Can Change the World by Jane McGonigal. This is perhaps the classic game studies book, like the in big capital letters. New York Times bestseller written by the one and only Jane McGonigal. If you haven't seen her TED talk, I'll wait, you can go watch it. This book really changes the paradigm about the way that we talk and think about games games as tools, tools that can be for detriment in some ways, in some instances that are very specific, but perhaps most novelly, tools that can change the world for the better. She talks about things from depression to obesity to climate change. It is the, the, the big capital letters classic. Number three. What Video Games Can Teach Us About Learning and Literacy by James Palgey. Now, I know I said Reality is Broken is the classic, and it is, but if there was a second the classic, it would be this book. James Palgey explores the educational value that games can have from playing games, and even, as he says in the blurb on the back of the book, yes, even the violent ones. It talks about how we develop our sense of identity, how we grasp meaning, how we perceive the world through and because of games. This one might be a little more tailored to the games and learning folks, but honestly, a lot of rows in game studies pass by the games and learning highway. It's a weird analogy. Number four, Getting Gamers, The Psychology of Video Games and Why People Play Them by Jamie Madigan. Now, if you saw my first video, you will recognize this one. I love Jamie Madigan's work. First of all, his writing style is like science communication goals. It feels like you're in the room with him and he's like sitting in a wingback chair with a pipe the fireplace is going like it's like story time. So in this book, he talks about why people play, why normal people turn into what he says raving lunatics online sometimes. I think we've all witnessed that. He talks about avatar identification. He talks about loot boxes. He talks about why some of us, why some of us feel the need to be completionists. I'll never forget those 100 foot races in Final Fantasy 12. Tell me I'm not the only one who did them. Number five, Lost in a Good Game by Pete Eccles. I will never stop talking about this book. I love this book. He explores the early history of games and play. He talks about why we play them. He also talks about moral panic, violent video games, game addiction. He tackles the amorphous screen time. And he also talks about immersion and virtual reality. So you get a little bit of everything in this book. What this book does really well is that it taps into this dialogue about why games are so meaningful to us as human beings. Number six, The Psychology of Video Games by Celia Houghton. This is really a kind of 101 broad scope, everything we need to know about video games, but to know we wanted to ask. It talks about everything from media effects to game design. And actually this is the only book on my list that specifically has sections in it around game design. She talks about our brains on video games, the importance of user experience, ethics in games, which is so important, and some TLDRs on the potential positive and negative impacts of gameplay. The Video Game Debate 1 and 2, edited by Cohort and Quant. You may recognize that first name, 
because it's me. And I don't want to recommend my own book. I'm not here to be like self aggrandizing. Is that the right word? But there really are no other books like it still today on the market. The Video Game Debate 1 and 2 is a series of essays that tackles the major debates we have in game studies. Instead of having to read a hundred research articles on violent video games and aggression and a hundred research articles on games and social learning, we can just read a chapter that kind of collates all that knowledge. These are the books I wish I had when I did my PhD. Volume one, the original video game debate talks about a history of video games. It talks about moral panic, games and physical health, violent games and violent crime, gaming addiction, the social impact of games, both in terms of social skills, but also social communities, games and learning, games and cognitive performance. Now, volume two extends upon this information. It's not really revisiting the old debates, but talking about the new debates that emerged between the publication of volume one and two. So it talks about games for change, loot boxes, the masculine culture of gaming, Twitch and other participatory cultures, esports using games in extended reality therapy, and also mobile gaming. Number eight, toxic mediocrity of video games and why gaming culture is the worst. Uh, first of all, this one wins for best title. Second of all, it has really great one-liners that I use all the time. This book delves into the misogyny that is deeply rooted in gamer culture, and it was epitomized by the Gamergate event of 2014. It talks about the real world consequences, the offline consequences of player communities that are abusive and what that means for gamer culture. So if you know me and my research, you know this is right up my alley. Relatedly, number nine is Gaming Sexism, Gender Identity in the Era of Casual Video Games by Amanda Cote. Now, this book again uses Gamergate as a bit of a jumping off a point, but it focuses more on gender roles and gaming identity. It talks about why we have sexist assumptions about the kind of games women play and how they play and how capable they are and how much they belong in these communities. Last but not least, Blood, Sweat and Pixels by Jason Schreier. Blood, Sweat and Pixels takes readers on a journey of game development, and it's like peeking your head into some of these studios. So if you wanna work in the industry, uh, or if you wanna advocate for game makers, this is kind of your one-on-one -on -one crash course of what it's like in these studios on the ground. Ah, <sighs> that was a lot of books, 10 of them. It'll fill up a shelf. Now these are all game studies books as I caveated in the beginning that lean very heavily uh, into the realm of games and psychology, but do not worry. I told you there was a special guest and there is. My colleague, Kelly Dunlap, she is a licensed clinical psychologist. She also teaches game design at American University and she is here now to share her top choices for those looking to get started in the world of game design. Hi, Rachel. Thanks so much for having me. My name is Dr. Kelly Dunlap. I am a clinical psychologist and a game designer. I'm the community director at Take This, and I occasionally teach courses on the psychology of video games. Here are my top 10 game design books that I recommend. So first up, we have the core texts, books that are just important for anybody who wants to know more about game design. And that is The Rules of Play by Salen and Zimmerman, an absolute classic. The Game Designer's Workbook by Tracy Fullerton, The Art of Failure by Jesper Yule, Games Design and Play, A Detailed Approach to Iterative Game Design by Colleen Macklin and John Sharp, and The Art of Game Design, A Book of Lenses by Jesse Schell. For the last five, I wanted to share some of my personal favorites um, that I use often in my own design process. First is An Architectural Approach to Level Design by Chris Totten, Play by Stuart Brown, Deep Games by Doris Rush, how Games Move Us by Catherine Ispister, and The Rules We Break by Eric Zimmerman. So I hope that your Amazon cart is now full or you're heading down to your local indie bookstore to pick some of these up. I wanna thank Dr. Kelly Dunlap for giving us her time and her recommendations. And thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe. And until next time, be excellent to each other and always cite your sources. And now you can, because I just gave you a whole bunch of them.